Hi guys, sometimes we get big chunks of data and we want to store them in a big memory like a DDR external, either PL or PS, and continue to process it in hardware without the software interference. For this, Xilinx provides us with the data mover. The data mover do that just that. It gets the data stream bus and it produces the AXI regular bus, which is a very complicated bus. The Xilinx use the AXI bus for many aspects and this is their formal bus. It's very useful, but it's very complicated as well. It has five buses, read address bus, write address bus, read, write, and acknowledge for the write. This is a very complicated bus. Data in the FPGA sometimes move in a simpler bus, an IXC stream bus. This bus is very simple. It only have data, keep, last, ready, and valid. So to transfer this kind of bus to this kind of bus, it's very complicated in regular hardware. And for this, the Xilinx provide us with the data mover. The bus doesn't have address or size, the AXI stream bus. So we need to give a command for the address and size and some control bits, which this is the bus used for this purpose. Uh, now the data mover will receive the command which give it the address and the size and then it can transfer the data chunk from the AXI stream bus to the regular AXI bus and to the DDR. Now it's very important since everything is done in hardware and no software that the size that issued in the command will be exactly the same size as the data structure here. If there will be a mismatch, an error will rise. Now, this, since we don't have any software here, this error will not be cleared until reset. So it's very important to notice that the data size mentioned in the command is exactly the data size of the data chunk coming in. This is done to write to the DDR, the memory, and there's the other way around, get, giving a command to read from the memory, and then the data mover will read from the address and size in the memory and produce the data to the FPGA. We'll start by opening Vivado. And we'll create a project. We'll call it Data Mover Proj, and we'll direct it to a demo folder I prepared. We'll add here a work directory. And we select it. Next is an RTL project, and we need our board, the A, the RT Z720 board. Okay, now let's create a block design. We'll call it Data Mover block design will address it to the same directory and we have our block design first we need the zinc even though it's an hardware project we still need clocks and reset and we need to see the DDR we run connect block automation To write to the DDR, we need an interface, so we go to PS, P 
PL configuration, high performance slave AXI interface, and we select it. And we have an interface for the hardware to the DDR, and the Zinc can see the DDR so we can check it. Now we have the data mover. Here is the data mover. We have here is the memory to stream port which reads from the DDR and write to the hardware and here is the stream to memory port which gets data from the hardware and send it to the DDR. The rest we will go over in a little while. Now if we run auto connection, Xilinx recommend that we use the interconnect. But I found that the interconnect is better for individual writes like registers and stuff like this and for a log chunk of data writing to a large memory like a DDR it's better to use the smart connect. Actually that makes no difference but it's better for performance. Now if we run we connected it to the slave high performance interface of the zinc and the interconnect allows us to connect through the smart connect and connect the clock and this is our main system but we need to generate the data and the command for the data mover for this i want to show you how xilinx recommend we do that for the data mover we have open IP example design. Now every IP catalog block has example design provided by Xilinx, uh, even if you customize it in your source code. So we will open it. We'll direct it to the same directory. And Vivado provided us with a new Vivado project of the example design. And this project has a top level with data mover, a lot of help modules, and a simulation. Includes a test bench, the top level and all its interior, and of course the data mover. Now, since we have the simulation, we can run it right out of the box. We'll remove the test page signals and go to our data mover signals. We'll add them. And now we need to see what signals we are interested in. Now we have the stream to memory AXI bus that need to be generated, the two commands and the outputs, the stream, the memory to stream with the status and the interface for the DDR. So these are the signals here. This is the memory, the command for the memory to stream. This is the memory to stream status. This is the memory to stream AXI bus, which actually goes to the DDR. And this is the memory to string output. This is the AXI stream output from the data mover the AXI stream. The same goes for the stream to memory. Here is the command
this is actually what we're looking for so we'll put them together the status the xi to the ddr and the stream to memory xi stream which we need to generate so these are the two streams these are the two commands and these are the two status and here are the errors which we hope will stay low now we can reset this simulation and run it again and we got test completed successfully now we can look at the signals what clients recommend us to do to work the data mover first we need the command now as we see the command here is 72 bits and once we have the data mover, this is in the product guide. You can see here, and I download lo load it from advance. We have the fields. Now this is the command for the stream to memory, which we need to generate, and the same for the memory to stream. And you can see that it's actually the same data because here we transfer 80 bytes in and out from a memory. Now the first field is the size. The size here have 23 bits, but we can configure it from 16 to 23 bits, maybe even less, but it's not efficient. So uh, we only use 16 bits. If we use more than 16 bits, the data mover will be bigger, but 16 bits will give us 64 Ks of bytes, uh, which is quite a big chunk and uh, I don't think we need more uh, if you do you'll need a bigger data mover the next field is the type it always one here it's always one next we'll have the four this is the EOF this actually defines for a memory to stream to have a last in the end this is xilinx recommendation for both memory to stream or stream to memory so we'll use this and the 32 bits here are the address if we, we can configure that the address will be bigger for 64 bits or whatever we have uh, in mpsoc we have 64 bits so we can use this so if we have more bits this will push everything to the left so we have 64 here we have th 32 and we address the zero data in in our project we won't address the zero data because the software is there so, and we will see this in when running this operation uh, next we can see how to generate the data the chunk itself after we initiate the command we start generating the data. It is very important that the size here, 80 bytes, will be exactly the size in bytes that we transfer in this chunk. Now you can see that we run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 until 1F. 1F is the last. And it's and so it's 20 uh, words, which are 80 bytes. It's very important that the size will be exactly the same. Otherwise, we'll get an error and an error cannot be removed except for a reset to the full block. So it's very important to use exactly the amount of data that we configured in our command. In the memory to string, we see here that after the command was initialized, we have the string here. Now the status give us indication when the DDR finish reading or writing or reading if you noticed here uh, 
in the memory to string there might be some word after this last so you have to take it into consideration working with the, with this signal so this is what we need to do and now we need to generate the data generator and this will do in my next video thank you and see you there